let's jump into Mac OS Big Sur coming soon all around the world to a Mac near you, hopefully to your Mac if it's eligible, which it hopefully is if it's a newer Mac. Now, as you can see right now, we're looking at Catalina. Now, this is not bait and switch. I am going to transition now to Big Sur. Let's go ahead and change the desktop background and it will open up an option here and we're going to go from Catalina to Big Sur. And of course it's dynamic, meaning that throughout the day you'll see Big Sur go from morning until evening eventually and all the cycles in between. So the, the lighting changes based on the time of the day of wherever you are. And it's, it's a beautiful view. I've actually been on this bridge. I can verify this is certainly Big Sur. We're expecting Mac OS Big Sur to be hopefully available in the next three to four weeks. By the time you watch this video, perhaps you're already, already using it. So let's go ahead and jump in. Now what we're going to do is follow along a little bit with what Apple has to say, and then I'm gonna show you kind of the real life usability of it from a beta perspective. Right now I'm running beta 10 at the time of this, this broadcast. So we'll scroll, th scroll through a lot of this. Old new experience, same Mac magic, okay. What does that mean? Well, you're probably seeing on my screen one thing that you, you certainly would see is a refresh dock. So looking at the dock here, just a must, much more crisp, clean look. Actually, I really like the look. I feel like I kind of have a new computer, although I don't. It, it certainly is a, a nice cosmetic upgrade. I'm certainly enjoying that. And as far as streamline apps from full height sidebars to refresh toolbars, a clean new app design, make sure your content is always front and center. So. Yeah, I would say overall the apps, um, there are certainly some changes and upgrades, for example, to mail. I'm not going to open it. As you may notice, I have quite a few emails in there, 228,074, and I'm afraid to start reading them. So we're going to go ahead and leave that closed. But if you do open calendars and so forth, you'll see um, kind of a, a, a lot of new upgrades to the visuals. Um, I will show you the launch pad, which is pretty cool, and you can kind of scroll through all the different apps that you might be running and nice way to access them instead of kind of having to dig through and, and find them one by one. Okay, so let's go on a bit further. Let's look at Safari. Now, you may notice that I am on Apple's site in Chrome. No disrespect intended to, tended to Apple's new, newly designed Safari. So we're gonna go ahead and switch over from Chrome now to Safari, here it is. So what do you think? It's certainly a new look. I, I actually really like it. When I first transitioned to beta of Mac OS Big Sur, I was just a little bit kind of disoriented in, in terms of where things are that I'm used to. And I was clicking the wrong places and, and especially in live videos, I was struggling to find, find things. But now that I'm used to it, it's super simple and easy to use. So you just click this plus right here and it opens up a new tab. And of course you can slide this tab all around and do everything that you might want to with this tab. Now, one thing that you will notice in addition to a new look and feel is the privacy report. So here we go with a summary. In the last seven days, Safari has prevented 130 trackers from profiling you. So that's a good thing. Let's go ahead and click on this, get some detail. It goes into which websites the trackers are on. It mentions that 64% of the websites contacted trackers. That's a pretty high percentage and it prevented 199 trackers from profiling me. We can click on show more and get some more information. So at least we know that Safari is now actively helping to protect our privacy, which is certainly an advantage. So let's go ahead and move on a little bit. You can customize Safari in different ways as well. I have mine on a very simplified view, customize start page, for example, and there's a lot of, lot of extensions as well as translations privacy report. We took a brief look at that as well. Okay, and all of this apparently will save you on battery life. I'm always plugged in lately, so I haven't got to experience that. There's a lot of new features in messaging. We're not going to go through that today, um, but pretty big overhaul in messaging. I would do that, but we'd end up probably getting in, in various chats and messages with, with people all over the place, so we're going to skip that for the sake of this video and saving your valuable time but as you can see there are certainly a lot of upgrades on on messaging and so forth so one thing that i do want to show you is maps let's check out maps so we're going to go ahead and open this now looking at maps and i'll go ahead and make this bigger you can kind of see the new look 
And here we are where we'd probably all like to be, including myself, Embassy Suites, Waikiki Beachwalk, Hawaii. Let's go. Okay, so when you click on it, you can see some basic information. Embassy Suites hasn't done a great job at having pictures and everything customized. If you go over to Fort Darusi Beach, let's click there, and we've got some photos courtesy of Yelp that you can scroll through, and also reviews are showing up, and there are various links. Now what's cool about this, let's say you want to share this with, with friends and family, you just click here and you can, you can easily share this, copy the link, etc. Um, add to favorites, save guide, create new contact, etc. So you can share these various destinations with others quite easily through the share icon. You can also click this to open up the website of Embassy Suites Waikiki Beach. And then here you are, welcome to Hawaii. Okay, so there we are. So that's a nice interface in terms of the mapping being quite a bit upgraded from the past. You can also do 360 views in areas where that's supported based on what's available on the map. So the other thing I do want to show you before we get too much farther into Apple's information is I'm going to navigate for a second to the trackpad, two fingers in the top right corner of the trackpad, sliding to the left opens a notification center and you can see that I've got some notifications. Actually, I've got nine of them. I can clear all if I want or clear one by one. Um, luckily, my Symantec scan found no threats as of this moment, which is great. Now, here are the various widgets which you can drag around. You can also edit the widgets and add and, and do all kinds of changes that you may see suited to your personal needs as far as widgets go, which is also quite cool. Now, in addition to that, let's go back here actually to Apple's site. Okay, we've skipped ahead a bit. There's a lot in Maps, and you can go to apple.com to learn more. And now there is something coming to the App Store, which has to do with privacy information and basically telling you regarding app privacy, what's being used by different developers in terms of your privacy being utilized in different ways. Okay, so let's go ahead and open the App Store and you will see that that feature is not yet active in Big Sur Beta 10, which I'm running. However, it is coming soon once it goes market, which hopefully will be quite soon. You will, I'm sure, see those various privacy settings which are not showing up at this time, but you can at least see kind of some of the upgrades to the look and feel of the App Store. All right, so there we go with App Store. Okay, um, there's some other changes such as editing and photos, listen now, home kit updates, faster updates. So the, the Mac OS updates are downloading in the background, making it faster and easier to install. Okay, let's go ahead and check this out here. So there is kind of a nicely Redesign control center, do not disturb, keyboard brightness, screen mirroring, display, sound, music. I can start playing a song. I have no idea what song that will be, so I better not click it. Um, but here we go. Nice new upgrade there as well. And you can see kind of an all around, all around improvements. Now let's talk about will your Mac be able to run Mac OS Big Sur? I sure hope so. Um, MacBooks 2015 and later, MacBook Air 2013 and later, MacBook Pro 2013 and later, Mac Mini 2014 and later, iMac 2014 and later, iMac Pro, you need a 2017 and later, and a Mac Pro 2013 and later. So that is essentially what I've seen so far. There have been a few glitches in beta, so for those of you that are in beta, you may have experienced this. If not, it's always good to wait for the market version. For example, notes, I've had a challenge where notes are crashing quite a bit, which I reported to Apple as part of the beta program. I'm sure that'll be ironed out, at least I'm hopeful it will be by the time it goes to market. I've also had issues with Microsoft products such as Word crashing and also with Adobe. I've had issues with Adobe when I go in and open Adobe Acrobat and I try to edit a document. When I go to the edit screen, um, immediately when editing a PDF, the app crashes. So um, a lot of those 
probably will be fixed. Word actually seems to have stabilized. I'm still having some issues with Adobe, but they're getting ironed out. By the time it goes market, I'm sure it will be. I'm really excited. We won't talk much about this yet, about Apple Fitness Plus, which is coming soon, which will be really an integrated fitness solution for virtual fitness that can, you, you can use on your, your iWatch, you can use on your iPad, you can use on your iPhone, etc. So that is also coming soon. If you have any questions, please feel free to share them. Take a moment to click subscribe and all for notifications. And I will make sure to provide updates on the latest technology released by Apple as soon as it launches or as it's in beta. Thank you for joining. Wish you the best. Please click like.